Hi everyone, it's Michael. So I have a very useful lemma for you guys today. Uh, this one I've seen pop up over and over again lately, so I figured it was about time to put a video on it. Uh, so if you haven't seen it before and you'd like to try to solve it, feel free to pause the video. Alright, so now I'm going to go over it. So we have a triangle ABC. I is the in center. The in circle is tangent to BC at point B. M is the midpoint of BC. And we want to show that the line IM bisects AD. Alright, so this is a pretty simple starting configuration, but surprisingly it's not that easy of a problem. Um, so we want to show IM bisects AD. Um, so one way to do this is to try to show that IM is a mid-segment of a, of a triangle. Um, so what I'm going to start out by doing is, since we want to show AE is equal to ED, well, if I extend DI to meet the in circle at another point, F, then we'd have DI is equal to IF. And so we'd want to show that AF um, is parallel to EI. That would solve the problem because then EI would be a mid-segment. Okay, so I'm going to do that. All right, so we want to show AF is parallel to EI because then since FI is equal to ID, that would mean AE is equal to ED. So now I'm going to use a very, uh, another very well-known lemma that will essentially finish off the problem. Um, and in fact, this lemma, I was thinking of just doing the video on this lemma alone, but I decided instead to use it to solve this original problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend AF to meet side BC at a point. And um, so this is what I mentioned before, FI is equal to ID, obviously, because uh, they're both radii of the in-circle. And now I'm going to extend AF to meet side B, C at point G. And the lemma I was talking about says that uh, G and D are actually reflections across point M. And if that's true, that would solve the problem. Because if, uh, if that were true, if DM equaled MG and FI were equal to ID, well, that would mean IM is parallel to FG. So that, and then from there it would follow that AE is equal to ED. All right, so how do we show that D and G are reflections across point M? So I actually ended up showing this um, in my video on Heron's formula. I think it might have been video number 47, um, but I'm going to prove it again here. Um, but this is a fact that's used all the time um, in so many different problems. So if you have a, an in-circle and then you um, take the point of tangency and take a perpendicular so, so that it meets the topmost point of the in-circle at point F, and then you draw line AF and it meets side BC at G, then BD has to equal CG. Um, so I'm going to show you guys a proof using the X-circle. Um, I think I may have proved this many years back without using the X circle, but I would say this is by far the most well-known proof of it, that, that BD is equal to CG. All right. Um, so I'm going to start by observing a couple things. Um, so what I'm going to do is, so that the in circle and the X circle are homothetic at point A. So if you scale up the in-circle at point A, you get the X-circle. Uh, so I'm going to use that fact. Uh, and I'm going to note one thing. So the, the tangent line to the in-circle um, at F is parallel to BC. And that's because uh, FD is perpendicular to BC. So I'm going to write some of this out. So since FD is perpendicular to BC, uh, we have the tangent line to omega at F is parallel to BC. So I'm going to draw that tangent line and I'm going to let it intersect the sides of the triangle at H and J. And the reason why I'm doing this is because um, I want to see omega. So omega is the inner circle, but I want to view it as an X circle. So omega is actually the X circle of triangle AHJ. Okay. And so if we scale, so if we take the triangle AHJ along with its X circle and we scale both of them up so that H goes to point B and J goes to point C, 
then the inner circle would scale to become the x circle. So I'm going to use that fact, but if that's true, that would mean point f, once we scale it up through a homophony of point a, it would, it would go to point g. Um, so this is kind of interesting. So I'm going to write some of it out. So, okay, so it's clear that triangle AHJ, as I mentioned, has to be similar to triangle ABC. That's because HJ is parallel to BC. And so if we scale up the whole figure AHJ along with the inner circle through a homophony at A, well, AHJ would become triangle ABC and the inner circle would become the X circle. Um, so this is what I mentioned. So omega is the AX circle of triangle AHJ. And so now I'm going to do the scaling. Um, so the, by the homophony at A, uh, G has to be the point of tangency of the AX circle of ABC. All right, so I'm going to draw the AX circle. Okay, and I'm just going to label the names of the of a couple other points of tangency. Okay, um, so this is key. So basically, we want to show that BD, which is the distance from B to the in circle, is equal to CG, which is the distance from C to the AX circle. And like I mentioned, I proved this in my video on Heron's formula. Um, but I'm going to give a little bit of a cleaner proof here. Um, so ignore, ignore that. Um, I wrote it, but then I erased it because I found a better way to prove it. Um, so here's going to be my idea. Um, if I want to prove that BD is equal to CG, um, first, I'm going to use the fact that uh, we have both AP is equal to AQ because they're both tangents to the X circle and AR is equal to AS because they're both tangents to the N circle. Okay. And if AP is equal to AQ and AR is equal to RS, I'm sorry, AR is equal to AS, we can subtract the two to get PR or RP is equal to SQ. Okay. So where do we go from there? Uh, if RP equals SQ, uh, we can break each of those up into two segments. So RP is RB plus BP, and SQ is SC plus CQ. All right, so RB plus BP is SC plus CQ. But RB is, is a tangent to the in circle, and BP is a tangent to the X circle. And we can do the same with SC and CQ. Okay, so this means that RB is equal to BD because they're both tangents to the, the same circle. And, and uh, BP is equal to BG because they're both tangents to the X circle. Okay, so if we rewrite this equation above, uh, we get BD plus uh, BG is equal to CD plus CG. Okay, so the question is, given this equation... Um, which is very symmetric. BD plus BG is CD plus CG. Can we use that to prove that BD is equal to CG? And so I thought of a fairly clever way to do this. Um, if you work out the algebra, I'm sure you could figure out a way to do it um, and probably a few more steps, but here's my kind of clever way to do it. If these two sums are equal, then they have to both equal half of the sum of all four of these segments. Okay, so this sum is equal to this sum is equal to half of the sum of the two sums. Okay, so that would be BD plus CD plus BG plus CG. And BD plus CD is BC, and BG plus CG is also BC. So this would be half of 2BC, which would just be BC. And then we're pretty much on our way there because... Um, if BD plus BG is equal to BC, well, we want to solve for BD so we can subtract BG from both sides. And then we get BD is equal to BC minus BG, which is CG. Okay. Um, and now we're very close to solving the problem. Um, like I mentioned, M is the midpoint of BC. So if BD is equal to CG then my symmetry dm has to equal uh, gm. So I'm going to write this out. So we then know that dm is equal to gm. 
And that means that MI has to be a mid-segment of triangle DFG because uh, DM is equal to GM and DI is equal to IF. So therefore, MI has to be parallel to FG, okay? So IM is parallel to FG. And if that's true, then that means that it, IM also has to bisect AD. Um, and so that's exactly what we wanted to show. Since DM is equal to GM um, and IM is parallel to uh, GF, then AE has to equal DE. And that solves the problem um, because that, in, an, in other words, that means the line IM by sex AD. Um, so this, like I said, the lemma where um, you use the fact that this, this point of tangency and this point of tangency are symmetric across M, uh, that comes up all the time. And I'm sure there's a way to prove this without using the X circle, but I feel like the X circle gives a very sort of nice intuitive explanation of why the theorem is true. Uh, so if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Uh, thanks, everyone.